Your wife made an appointment for you to do a psychological evaluation. She said you bought a Cobra back in November last year. Hmm. Cobra. Is that snake? Hey guys, we're reviewing Andy Cubic Cobra Go today. I bought this printer back to November last year. It's been love and hate experience with this Cobra since then. This video was planned published in the end of December last year. Unfortunately, I was not able to get it work as I expected. The print quality is not quite well, which we are going to talk about more in the printing segment. Let's talk about the money first. This printer was released in December 2022 with MSRP at $209. Currently, on any Cupid official site, it is on sale with $169 with extra $10 if you are a first-time buyer. You may see here, Cobra also has 800 different siblings like Ender 3. There are many different Cobras to fit in your budget. With that being said, let's head to a technical detail. This printer is targeting sub $200 entry level market. You could say it is aimed to share a piece of the cake from Ender 3 Pro and Ender 3 V2 with similar MSRP, but it is looks a lot fancier than Ender 3. It doesn't look cheap. There are attention to detail on design. Injection molding part looks very simple and stylish. The cut line on the aluminum gantry matches style on the top beam. The overall style also looks very cohesion. Copa Gold print size is 220mm x 220 x 250. That's a machine dimension compared to a human. Copa Gold equipped with most common feature at this price range, like T-slot and wheel motion system, single gear Bolton extruder, single Z-axis. This printer is also sold as a kit require around 40 minutes to an hour symbol time. Here are some meat and potatoes of this printer. All Cobra series printers from Anycube come with automatic bed leveling feature, with a fixed rubber bushing bed mount, one-sided PEI sheet. If you have seen my last Ender 3 review video, I bottled this build plate and testing for polycarbonate on Ender 3. This printer comes with any cubic ohm main board, bell tensioner ohm X axis, and Y axis. And I have to say the 2.4 inch LCD screen works surprisingly well. The UI is very simple and it's very intuitive too. The special designed anti bellash not supposed to be helped to remove the imperfection on Z axis. But in my case, it's not working that well. You can tell there is many attention to detail while I designed this printer. But is it going to be work really well right out of the box? We'll find out soon. The entire symbol and calibration process are going to take hours to do. There are also many specific points that you need to pay attention during the assemble passes. So we're just going to make quick here and a step-by-step -step guide video will be uploaded soon.
first. So le leveling, auto leveling. The printer will heat the nozzle and bed to a certain temperature. Then it was sensing 25 points on the print bed to add the compensate according to different height. Now we can insert the filament. After auto leveling, we still need to manually input the Z offset. Now there are two ways to do this. One is traditionally use the paper method. However, every time when you reduce the Z offset, the step motor will be automatically unable, which will stop you from moving the nozzle from one corner to the other. So which is a lot more complicated. The second method is you throw a print on it and then adjust the Z offset while printing. Now I set up this four corner piece print to adjust the Z offset. At the same time, I want to make sure that all four corners are level correctly. In my case, you can see my four corners are not perfectly level to each other. Now I choose to use the Allen wrench manually tie down the higher corner. Even though rubber bushing on the print bed is very firm, but there's still room for adjustment. After the adjustment, now we can redo the auto bed leveling again and test print to see if it is fixed the issue. My four corner still isn't perfect, but it's acceptable. I'll call it good for now. Now I have tried roughly almost a hundred print for the past three months, and this printer consistently returned an inconsistently result to me. And I have been stuck on troubleshooting once and once again. It is really frustrating. Some of the problems are come with the hardware that was misinstalled from the manufacturer. My anti bed lock knot, the bottom part and the top part, was installed in the opposite direction, which I was not able to insert a bed lock knot on the thread rod correctly. There is always a gap between the spring load retainer inside the bed latch knot and that caused the first 20 layer or 10 layers of a print always smashed together also the aluminum piece on the right side of my gantry was not correctly aligned with the base you can see here it's not perfectly 90 degrees that caused a problem that every time the t-slot wheel will be squished and was not able to run smoothly on the bottom of the gantry. After fixing those two issues after many times disassemble and reassemble, I finally get some acceptable consistent result of this printer. Again, let's start with the calibration cube. This print came out okay. There's still some imperfections on the layer on the z-axis as you can see. I went ahead and tried this again with a different temperature setting. And this time, it turned out a lot nicer. Let's try it again with different color filament. The print quality is okay.
I change a filament again to print with this 3D Benji. As you can see, the print rates are um, all right. It's nice, I can see it. But there's still some Z sync issues, and the overhang looks okay. Let's print a thinker next. As you can see, there's an overhang issue on this print. And there are also some random holes all around the print. I want to go ahead and try some larger print with this thinker model. And this time, it turned out pretty nice. But you can still see there is some imperfections on the Z axis. Let's use the exactly same G code print with Ender 3 Pro and do a comparison. The Cobra Grow is on the left and the Ender 3 is on the right. I will leave you to judge which one is better. Next, I want to try some PETG print with this bottom tube setup. As you can see, there are a lot of stringing and the print quality are, are okay. Let's try another model with PETG. This time, stringing gets improved a little bit, but you can see there is a, there is a white tower in between the part. That is because I use the auto lasp. But you can see the surface finish are very rough. I want to try another print with different setting on the slicer. I change the nozzle temperature and retraction setting. This time, it gets a lot better on the surface finish. But you can see there's still a lot of strain. I go ahead and try the TPU print with this printer. You can see the Bolton 2 setup didn't really do well with this TPU. There is a lot of room for improvement. But for now, let's leave it as it. Final thought of Cobra Go. I personally like this printer a lot. The design is awesome. The hardware is offered a lot for its price. The print is quiet during printing and it is capable with different filaments. The little LCD screen is very easy to use. The UI is simple and intuitive. Any cubic goes up very far on Cobra's family design. The Cobra series is developed on the same platform, so they could share a lot of same part. It will help to reduce the development cost, and at the same time, they could cut some of the features and offer different price to fit different customer demand with their budget. You can pick based on the feature that you want, or you can select the printer based on your budget. However, my main problem for this printer is the adjustment. The manual instruction is somewhat misleading and the overall system is not quite tolerant with your adjustment, which means you need to spend a lot of time to find a perfect adjustment in order to get consistent printing quality. Also, it is known that this printer needs an e-step adjustment, which I get it, but I am expecting a better design from the manufacturer. The E-Step tone is now very complicated, but as a beginner, it will add some complication to getting started printing. I believe that it is very important for a printer to return a reasonable print quality right out of the box, especially for entry-level printer. Most people buying this printer are beginners. I can't say how important to see the first print works after a symbol. That's how this major things attracts people. I could accept an okay print quality right out of the box and spending some time to learn, knowing more about this machine while we're taking it. 
It is a continual process of improving the print quality and learning. However, say as Sobo S306, this Cobago is newly released model. At the early production stage, there will be a lot of minor design and production problem, which it will reflect on your printer if you are not lucky enough like me. You may receive a union that works not so well right out of the box like me. It doesn't mean you couldn't fix a problem, but it's just very time consuming and frustrating experience. Or most likely you are going to get a printer that works perfectly right out of the box. The accessories and part supply are still near empty so far. The customer base is not big as in the 3 at this point. If you want to do some upgrade on it, you may need to spend time and try to do it on your own. Also, some replacement part, you may find it's hard to find it online. Sometimes you have to order from AliExpress and that took months to send to your home. If you are lucky enough to able to make it work right out of the box, with a hardware offer, you're happy with this printer for only a long term. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.